Hey everyone, 2014 is almost over, so it's time for my top 10 games of the year. At number 10 on my list is Wolfenstein The New Order. The game is set in the 1960s in an alternative history where the Nazis won the Second World War. You take control of war veteran William J.B. Blaskowitz. This game plays to the strengths of classic old style first person shooters with med packs and no regenerating health. Big ass meaty sounding guns which are so much fun to shoot and kill Nazis and their mechs and even robot dogs. The story and characters weren't anything special, just serving you a reason as to why you need to kill everything in sight. The level design was okay and the sound was fantastic. I just had a blast playing this game. Number 9 on the list is Murdered Soul Suspect, a game in which at the very start of the game, your character, Ronin, is murdered. With no idea of who killed you, you must solve your own murder so you can pass on to the next planet of existence and not be stuck in purgatory. I wasn't too sure on this game. I liked the concept, but it seemed to get a lot of bad reviews. Sure, the game had a few bugs, and without doing any of the collecting, you could blast through the story within four to five hours. But this is a case where not every game has to be hours long to be good. This story was played out perfectly and never got boring. I was hooked into the story and wanted to find out why the hell I had died. It's a shame this game didn't find much success. I would really recommend it to play one Sunday afternoon when you've got nothing else to play. Number 8 on my list is Hyrule Warriors. When this game was announced, it caused quite a stir with the Zelda purists all up in arms about it and the Dynasty Warrior fan base a little confused with the crossover decision. For me, I have enjoyed both series of games, but I'm rather picky to which Zelda game I play and I haven't played a Dynasty Warriors game in years, but I loved this idea. When I finally got my hands on this game, I had a blast chopping down hundreds of enemies and loved the little touches bringing the Zelda mechanics into this game. And the fact that you could play two player, with one player using the gamepad screen and the other on the TV, it finally made use of the second screen experience. Number 7 on my list is Infamous Second Son. This was the first big party title from Sony for the PlayStation 4 this year, and it really did deliver. The graphics were great to look at and showed off the PS4 graphic capabilities, delivering another solid game in the series. This was the first game I really used that share button on the controller, posting lots of screenshots to Facebook, which had lots of interest from friends that hadn't really made the jump to the new consoles yet. I wasn't too keen on the new protagonist, Desmond Rowe, but the gameplay was tight and the new powers were a lot of fun to play around with. I really look forward to the next game in the series. Number 6 on my list is Destiny. Destiny had a lot of hype going into its launch and sadly it didn't seem to live up to people's expectations. For me, I wasn't that hyped about the game and it wasn't until I got into the beta that it actually sparked any interest. When the game released, it was basically the same as the beta, just a bit longer and more items to unlock. I had a lot of fun playing this, especially with friends and strike missions and levelling my character up, but this had me frustrated as well. Once you levelled up to level 20, to keep levelling up, you had to level up your light. You'd only get these light points from blue armour, which were only found in randomly dropped blue orbs, which may or may not be in one of these blue orbs once you cash them in. This happened to me a lot and would hardly ever drop for me. Then there was the rise of the loot cave, where you could shoot respawning enemies which would speed up the grind process for you to collect orbs much quicker. Even with its problems in the launch window, which have been ironed out and updated with a series of patches, I still find myself coming back for more and just having a lot of fun. And isn't that what gaming is meant to be about? Number 5 on my list is Mario Kart 8. 
This was the reason I bought my Wii U, and thankfully, it didn't disappoint. The game looks fantastic in HD and runs at a smooth 60 frames per second. It features some great new tracks and some classic tracks updated for use with the new game mechanics of driving on the walls. The only place it failed was the multiplayer battle mode, as it wasn't much fun and I just wanted the N64 battle mode back. I was also saddened that you couldn't use the gamepad screen as a second screen like you can in Hyrule Warriors, which could have meant fire player races. This was just what you expected from a Mario Kart game, and I had lots of fun playing this on my own and with friends. Number 4 on the list is The Wolf Among Us, a new series of episodic games from Telltale based on the comic book series Fables I hadn't even heard of until this game was announced. Not knowing anything about this series, I decided to take the plunge after loving their Walking Dead game. I was certainly not disappointed with the result, a fantastic story that drew me in right away. It is based on fairy tale story characters including the Big Bad Wolf, Snow White, Beauty and the Beast and others. You play as the Big Bad Wolf who is called Bigsby who is the sheriff of the town in which all these characters now live, Fable Town. You have to work with Snow White to figure out who is killing off the Fables by talking to people and investigating crime scenes. It has a great story, interesting characters and great dialogue. Number 3 on my list is The Last of Us Remastered. I was debating with myself as to whether to include this game or not, due to it being released the year before and also being my game of the year of 2013. The simple fact is this is probably my all time favourite game. I say probably because I can't decide between this and Mario 64. But the simple fact is this was the best game on the PlayStation 3 and as of right now is the best game on the PlayStation 4. It is made better with the new included feature of Picture Mode, which I had so much fun taking photos with and zooming in on the characters and being amazed at how detailed they are. With its great gameplay, sound, story, characters, dialogue and visuals, it really is the full package. The reason it's not number one is due to the fact that it's a re-release. Number two on my list is Far Cry 4. If you haven't played Far Cry 3, then there's not much new stuff here. Just a new setting, characters, weapons, and the ability to ride a little. But this isn't a knock on this game. Hey, it's number two on my list after all. What this does mean is I got to go hunting again, which I find the best part of the game. I got to liberate the map, taking outposts, and shutting down propaganda broadcasts and bell towers. Sinking about 30 hours into this game, it took me a long time to just play the main campaign missions, as I found myself getting sidetracked with the various collectible side missions, hunting animals, and generally just messing about. A lot of the characters I found myself not very interested in, but the bad guy, Pagan, was brilliantly written and acted perfectly to where I wanted him on screen more. So, number one on my list is South Park The Stick of Truth. This game is by far the most fun I had playing this year. It captures the show perfectly, looking just like a feature length episode with all the amusing jokes and sequences that would only happen in South Park. This is because the creators of South Park, Matt and Trey, wrote the script of the game and worked closely with Obsidian to finally bring a great South Park game. The game had lots of little references to things that had happened in the show and some pop culture references from TV, movies and games. You get to create your own South Park character and are placed into the middle of the war the kids are playing in the style of Lord of the Rings. You get to decide which side you want to fight on Level up your character and features lots of different weapons and special attacks that only make sense in the South Park world. This is quite simply the best licensed game there has ever been and had me laughing all the way through the game. That my friends is no easy task. No, not making me laugh, that's easy, but actually being funny and good. So there we have it, my top 10 games of the year for 2014. What were yours? Let me know in the comments below.